She, in the dark, found light. Brighter than many ever see. She, within herself, found loveliness through the soul's own mastery. And now the world receives from her dowry the message of strength, of inner power.
One night there was a terrible fight in the corner. <coughs> it began when a little French danseuse named Annette was going to have a child. Still to make a living, she had to come to work every night, dance with the patrons, and drink as much champagne as she could in order to get commission. But she was not well, and she shouldn't have been there. Of course, if she had had any other way of making a living, she wouldn't have been there. But she didn't have any other way. Feeling badly, no doubt, Annette began to be very spiteful to those clients who didn't think they could afford another bottle of champagne. So one night, the owner of the place asked her not to come back anymore. He was French, she was French, and they spoke the same language fluently. So Annette said some very unpleasant things to the owner. He called an attendant to eject her. Annette would not go. The attendant laid hands on her and pushed her. He struggled in her satin evening gown toward the door. As she passed the last table, Annette seized, seized a patron's champagne bottle, <coughs> ice, bottle, and all, and flung it straight at the proprietor at his cash desk behind the bar, whereupon the attendant slapped Annette to the floor with one blow of his hand. <coughs> then it was that Florence, the famous entertainer, the same Florence who snubbed millionaires nightly, arose from her table near the orchestra to defend the poor little French danseuse in her trouble. Florence wore an evening gown of gold and a spray of orchids in her hair. She swept across the floor like a handsome tigress, blocking the path of the waiters, who at the bidding of the management re refused and rushed to eject the little danseuse. Florence said, do not touch that woman. She's a woman and I'm a woman, and can't nobody hit a woman in a place where I work. Don't you put your hand on that woman. By that time, the little Danchish had risen from the floor and seized another ice bucket, which she sent whirling into space. Customers dodged behind the tables. The orchestra struck up. Tuck me to sleep in my old Kentucky home. 
to drown out the noise. A waiter did lay hands on the dancers, but Florence laid hands on the waiter. Then the Negro manager laid hands on Florence, and a battle royale began between the women and those who sided with the women and the management and those who sided with the men. <coughs> singing too in the time of silver rain when spring and life are new. Thank 
accounts for the whores and generals, for the American millionaires, and the school teachers out for a spree. Play it, jazz band. You know the tune that laughs and cries at the same time. You know it. May I? Maybe. Mindful. Having said another one about Play it, jazz band. You've got seven languages to speak in and then some. Even if you do come from Jelly, can I go home and get you Swedish? Sure.
the sounds of the Harlem night drop one by one into stillness. The last player piano is closed. The last victrola ceases with jazz boy blues. The last crying baby sleeps. And the night becomes still as a whispering heartbeat. I toss without rest in the darkness, weary as the tide of night, my soul, empty as silence, empty with a vague aching, emptiness, desire, needing someone, needing something. I talked without rest in the darkness until the new dawn, wan and pale, descends like a white mist into the courtyard. 